Hello humans, Master Dinner Flex here bringing you the low quality content you deserve and today I'll be going over one of the revisions to uh, the agent combos I've been doing. Now, um, if you were concerned earlier about the mass number of bricks in the deck, that has completely disappeared, like entirely. Um, you no longer need to play like Bhutan or Triaz or like the Dark Lord, even though I actually think the Dark Lord's pretty good, you don't really need to play him anymore. Um, the Eva isn't necessary for a lot of combos. Just so many bricks just disappeared. And it's weird because you think, well, how does the trap do that by itself? And it's not the fact that the trap does it by itself. It just gives this deck a way to play if it doesn't combo off. And because of that, we can take out a lot of the bricks and put some more consistency cards um, and generic cards and things like that in here. So um, I just want to show off a quick combo. This is going to be a two-card combo um, of just how I would kind of go about the turn. And this two-card combo actually com comes in multiple variations. So if you open Venus, Earth, you do it if you open Venus, um, Sacred Water, it does it. Earth, Neptune, it does it. Earth, Sacred Water. The only combination that doesn't do it is specifically Venus, Neptune. But uh, that's that's whatever. That's fine. So let's get into it. Let's just say we open Earth and Sacred Water. So we'll activate Sacred Water, add this to hand. Normal summon Earth, and we'll go ahead and add our Venus. We will discard the Neptune to special summon Venus, and then we will special summon two Shine Balls from our deck. Now, um, this is one of the things I was saying earlier, is I was trying to test, like, how does this deck play through Nibiru? I feel like there's too many times where you could get nibiru and you lost everything, but this is going to be our fifth summon. Um... And you can actually do it earlier, because this is a level 2 tuner and a level 2 non-tuner, so that's Arclight. But I want to specifically combo off a little bit more, because I want to show you something. So, we're going to activate this effect. This is our fifth summon. So if they Nibiru here, if they Nibiru you right now, here's what happens to your board. You will get the Nibiru token. And then you will send Majesty Hyperion, that is an extender. And we still have another Shine Ball in the deck. So... After getting Nibiru, we still have four materials. Now you might be asking, wait, how is that the case? So Neptune, as a way to prevent a uh, Agent FTK with Jupiter, they put a restriction on this card that says you cannot tribute the thing you revived or summoned with Neptune. So because of that, your opponent cannot tribute over your Venus. Um... So literally they would have a Nibiru and you two still have two more summons afterwards. So that's like insane. That's actually nuts. We just completely ignore Nibiru right there. Um, so we will send this. Let's just say they don't have Nibiru. So right now we have this. And now we will f summon our final Shine Ball. And if they Nibiru here, you still have three summons. Like it literally just doesn't matter right now. And they would have to Nibiru here or otherwise it's unactivatable. Because we are just going to summon Arclight now. Um, next, we are going to banish the Neptune to special summon Majesty Hyperion. And the Neptune is going to trigger to search us a Sanctuary in the Sky. Um, now, this is where the rest of the cards in our hand come into play. Because now we can link these, th these two into Parshath. Discard a card. And we will search Lost Sanctuary. Um, and then finally we can turn these two into a two material Apollosa. So, um, this is our end board. It doesn't look that impressive. We got an Omni Negate, which is Arclight specifically, so Droplet is mostly out of the equation. Um, then two material Apollosa. It might get one Negate, or they might give up their battle phase to get over it. But that's where it gets interesting because remember we still have two cards in hand and whatever we discarded um whether ideal or not but lost sanctuary on activation will set any follow-up we want um divine punishment isn't exactly a follow-up it just pushes uh 
helps you push for game next turn, but the only time you'd ever want a counter trap to do that is if you're playing against a trap deck. Uh, because if they, like, strike a summon, you want to punishment that, but, like, if it's just a bunch of monster effects and, like, Lost Sanctuary already prevents that from happening, so, um... Keep that in mind with Divine Punishment if you ever set it. It's really only good against the trap decks when you're using it that way. Um, but we can set like Sacred Waters of the Sky to search Earth the next turn. But a card I was um, kind of not liking a lot that I actually do like a lot now is Chorus in the Sky. Because every single combo you do where you end up searching Lost Sanctuary lets this card be fully active. Every single time. There, I, there's no difference. So... Um, Let's say they break apart your board and you end up using this, banishing a shine ball. So you prevent their turn, but you lost your board. Next turn, you'll go back up to three cards and then activate chorus, add back earth, and then add back Neptune, and you just resolve salvage. Um, so now, next turn, uh, on that turn, we will normal earth, search master Hyperion, special summon it, a banishing an agent, pop two of their cards. And then we can just go absolutely ham with, like, Flare Hyperion sending things. We have the Neptune, which is a Reborn. Any monster effect they try to prevent us from just going for game. We still have Lost Sanctuary to stop it. Um, what's really cool is if you banish Arclight with Lost Sanctuary, like, let's say right here, we can send Master Flare and we can send Jupiter, which wherever that one is, um, send Jupiter, discard any random fairy or this if we don't, and then we can revive the Arc Light just so, like, the possibility of them trying to stop this is just impossible. Uh, and this doesn't even need to go to the graveyard to activate its effect. We can banish it to revive, uh, like, Master Hyperion, and then some of the other Hyperion, and then just win, win, win. This guy, it all, Flare, when it copies, uh, Jupiter, it also copies its other effects, so now it's at 4,000. Like, easy, easy game. Like, you do way too much damage on board. Um, but that's, like, an example I, ever wanted, I wanted to get into it is now this deck can play a lot more realistic games because it decks that just focus on only comboing and don't have a win condition if they get really disrupted, they don't really work anymore. And they, they haven't worked really that much since, like, 2019 where we had, uh, like... Cards like Azathoth, and we didn't have so many hand traps like Nibiru deciding the game. Um, or like Dark, Dark Ruler and Droplets. So comboing to death with all these like mega mega boards isn't really that viable anymore. We've gotten way too many tools since, it, since then that you don't really want to rely on it as a win condition. You want to build your board on the idea that... I'm okay losing this as long as this board can just prevent me from dying. Because if it can prevent me from dying, that means I win next turn. And this is exactly what this board is. That's exactly what this kind of... It's exactly what I wanted from this deck. Because it could combo till the end of time, put a billion bajillion negates up. But like... It wasn't really playing a reliable strategy. It was like your opponent had to have, like, they they had to if they had more than one hand trap or they had a power hand trap like Gamma or um, like uh, Nibiru or Droll or Lancia. That's just that's it. You can't play. But with this kind of deck, no matter what hand traps they throw at you, you know you're seeing the next turn, which you can then just heavily punish them for letting you survive. Um, and this deck is also very good at not dying because not only does Sanctuary have an actual effect, which is um, anytime they run over a fairy, you don't take any battle damage from it, um, which actually is relevant. And then uh, more importantly, um, Majesty Hyperion, while it's face up on the field, if a fairy if you conduct a battle where a fairy would take battle damage, um, your opponent takes the same damage as well. So, um, if you control Sanctuary in the Sky and Majesty Hyperion, and your opponent controls, um, Chaos, just a massive monster, because this has already come up before. Say, like, some 
8,000 attack mega big boy, and you just summon Majesty and normal um, Neptune, what you could do is just attack into their 8,000 thing. You take no damage because of Sanctuary, but they take 8,000 because of Majesty. Um, that has actually come up before. Not specifically 8,000, but I have used Majesty Hyperion to make my opponent hit themselves to death. So, like... This deck's very good at not dying. It's very, very good at putting up a bunch of damage on a board, a bunch of negates. And it's gotten good at playing through hand traps. Which, finally. Like, all the testing I was doing before Lost Sanctuary was trying to get the hand trap situation under control. But this does it because we can change how to build the deck. And... I'm excited for this. Um, are we in the structure deck? Probably not. They're probably going to give us another garbage structure deck no one cares about and then put this in a reprint set no one cares about where they will reprint Imperm or Evenly Matched as an Ultra Rare for the 4 millionth time, which is upsetting. But I'm just glad whenever we're going to get this because I am very excited for this deck. This is, this is really nice. But yep, that's about it. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And remember... Master Dinnerflax will take your soul.